might ask why every time we have a feast of our Blessed Lady, almost always, almost invariably, the Gospel passage is that of the Annunciation. But when you have an episode that encompasses almost every dogma of our Blessed Lady and expounds on that, it becomes a wonder. And here again, it's the same because as the lady angel expounds to our blessed lady what is to happen to her, we see almost every aspect of our lady. First, the, the fact that she's mother of God. She's to be the mother of God, yet remain a virgin. Because this is the work of God himself, and it is the second person of the blessed trinity who becomes incarnate. who becomes the son of Mir. But here also, then we also see here Our Lady's direct relationship with each person of the Blessed Trinity, which is perhaps the first, exam first time in scriptures that all three persons of the Blessed Trinity are revealed. And it's through her direct relationship with each person daughter of the Father, mother of the Son, spouse of the Holy Spirit. And then we see something else here, which is a great consolation to all of us. We see in her motherhood of God, she is also the mother of all of us. As mother of God, the one whom she will give the name Jesus, the one who saves, that means she's the mother of the Redeemer. She is the co-redeemer. But it even goes further. <clears throat> because the son to whom she is to give birth is king. He is the king of kings. And his kingdom, as the angel says, will have no end. Therefore, she who is to give birth to the king is queen. And here's where we come to that great consolation for us. The queen mother. Which is a very key and important role. Let's look at that for a moment. In ancient Israel, the mother of the king is the one who sat at the side of her son and had that title, queen mother. <clears throat> and was, in fact, the king would bow down to her. He respected her and she sat at his side and she would intercede to the king for those who came in seeking the king's mercy when the king had to make certain judgments, she would intercede. She was the advocate, as it were, before the individual and the king. And that's exactly who our Blessed Lady is for us. She is our advocate before God in heaven, before the Father in heaven. She is the Queen Mother. And that is why we see her spoken of as standing at the side of the king, arrayed in gold as the psalm repeats or chants. She is the strongest advocate we have before the Father. Precisely because she is queen. And that's what we celebrate today, her queenship. That she is queen. And that she advocates before the Father for all of us. Therefore, she is also the mediatrix of all graces. It's exactly what our Lord did when from the cross he looked down and he said to his mother, first to his disciple, St. John, behold your mother. And then to her woman, no, it's her, woman, behold your son. And each word has an importance. Woman, behold your son. And then to the disciple, behold your mother. Woman, in the Greek, is a high exalted term. He's not deriding her at all. Basically, he's calling her queen. <clears throat> Behold your son, are referring to the disciple, to all of us. We are her children. And then to all of us, Behold your mother. She is our mother. But not just any mother. She is the queen mother, you see. And therefore she is the strongest advocate we can have before the king, before the father. Who respects the mother and will never say no to her. 
Let us turn to her then in our every need. Let us have recourse to her and she will intercede for us before the throne of her divine son for mercy and for every grace we need to achieve exactly what we are here for, that is our salvation. Let us ask her graces then, ask that help from her, she who is our queen and mother. Praise be Jesus and Mary.